Father Thomas Hopko of Blessed Memory needs little introduction. He is one of the most beloved and influential figures in American Orthodoxy in the past century. Perhaps more than any other Orthodox figure in America, Father Tom bridged the gap between the academy and the parish, as well as between the pre-internet and the internet worlds. He was a prolific podcaster, producing over 400 podcasts, touching on nearly every aspect of the Orthodox Christian faith. Ultimately, however, Father Thomas was a pastoral academic who brought decades of pastoral experience into his work as a professor and eventually as Dean of St. Vladimir's Orthodox Seminary. It has been five years now since Father Tom's untimely repose, and it seems appropriate to remember his rich life and contribution to the Orthodox Church in America. I was blessed to meet Father Tom on a number of occasions, one of which was in the summer of 2010 when he graciously agreed to sit down with me for this interview. That morning, it was a Sunday, we celebrated the liturgy in the monastery chapel and then went to the refectory for lunch. The sisters sat me next to Father Tom, and for the next couple of hours I was blessed to listen to him discuss all sorts of topics, from Orthodox theology and church history to American history and politics, among other things. Father Tom effortlessly made connections from the breadth and depth of his knowledge, and I had the impression that I could simply follow him around with an audio recorder and produce books from his remarkable conversation. It was a joy to spend time with him, and I'm glad to finally be able to make the fruit of that interview available to the world, albeit 10 years later. believe that, uh, to use an expression of the Church Fathers, there's an order in spiritual life and in spiritual learning. And that order can't be violated. Um, and there are elements that have to be there. And if they're not there, it's not going to work. But I think uh, those in our time today, 21st century, who are going to come to orthodoxy and they're interested in it, they want to know, I would even put it this way, they want to know whether or not it's true. Like, is this the truth or isn't it? Is this real or isn't it? Um, how can I know? How, can I come to know for myself? And actually, over the years, I've been a priest 47 years, I made up a kind of a, a list. It's funny, it's like 12 points, almost like Alcoholic Anonymous or something. Uh, I'm not sure I'll say all 12 right now because I don't have the list with me. Uh, but I would say the, this is how I would, this is what I would suggest. Number one, you got to be really patient. And you got to really say, I want to know. And that I'm ready to do whatever it takes to know. And I'm ready to receive advice about that. <laughs> I'm ready to listen to what scriptures or saints or modern uh, teachers would advise me to do. I would come and say, what then should I do? Like the people said to Peter on the day of Pentecost. What then should I do? And um, I would say, if I were asked, I would say, the first thing that I would say is, be ready to count the cost because it's going to be a really violent process. Every demon in hell is going to try to destroy it. And it's, and it's not purely intellectual. It's moral. It's spiritual. It's psychological. It's physical even. <laughs> There's all elements. But if I had to click off a list, I would say this. Number one, if you're ready to pay the price... I would say the first thing that a person should do is read through the New Testament slowly and carefully at least two or three times, even if we think we know it. Don't think we know it. Read through the Gospels, read through Paul, read through the letters, go through the Apocalypse, and keep in mind the Old Testament, you know, and do it slowly and carefully. The parts that you understand, you try to put into practice. Those that you don't understand, bracket for a while. Don't get excited. Don't freak out. You might write questions down. You might ask somebody. But you got to go through the process total. You don't keep stopping asking questions all over the place. I think that has to be done slowly and carefully. It's got to be done with prayer. You got to ask God to guide you. You got to ask God to illumine you. Um, you have to believe that He will. You have to ask for the Holy Spirit. 
uh, if a person is a catechumen, but let's say they're not even sure that they believe in God, or maybe there's an Orthodox Christian who says, I, I don't know if this is true or not. I would say you still have to pray, even if it's to whom it might concern, you know, or something. Just say, Lord, if you are there, guide me. Because prayer is the way that it happens. It doesn't happen without see seeking. It's those who seek will find, but you got to be seeking and you got to seek from the source and the source is God himself. So there has to be some kind of prayer. I would suggest that people would go to the Orthodox Church and just stand there or sit there if it gets too long and listen to what's going on. Listen to the prayers. Listen to the Psalms being read. Listen to the hymns being sung. Don't judge anything. And certainly don't pay attention to how the Orthodox are behaving, you know, or how they're singing or all that. Uh, you know, try to bracket that. Try to stay with what is actually going on there and not patiently jump to conclusions. You might have questions, but say, I'm going to give this some time. And while you're reading the Holy Scriptures and while you're praying, you go to those church services. Then I would also suggest a, an ascetical discipline um, that you fast. A couple of days a week, you don't eat as much as you normally would. Um, that you, you eat good foods. You don't get drunk. <laughs> you don't gouge yourself with food. If you have a food problem, you get help with it. If you have an alcohol problem, you get help with it. Uh, but there has to be the care for the body and the brain. Because the mind can't work if the body is shot. You know, one Orthodox Saint Theophan the Recluse said, if you've got a full stomach with no good stuff in it, you're going to have a hard heart, a stiff neck, babbling mouth, itchy ears, roving eyes, and whirling thoughts. <laughs> so the body, ascetical. you got to learn to be quiet. I would say a person who wants to know God and know truth should sit at least 15, 20 minutes, if not a half an hour, every day in complete silence, just before the face of God, not thinking, not worrying about problems, just opening yourself to God and quietly praying, enlighten my darkness, lead me, uh, you know, watching the thoughts that come, turn them over to God, see what it is that's bothering. Even think about your dreams and stuff, I think would be important. Then I think a person should also do good deeds. Uh, they should try to help the poor and, and do it secretly, not being known. Uh, I think if a person is having problems with church, they shouldn't be active in church. They shouldn't read. They shouldn't teach. They shouldn't uh, be a singer. They, sh uh, they should just quietly take care of their life for a while. Uh, but I do think that um, uh, acts of mercy in secret are really important to be done. Sharing goods, like giving money secretly to poor people if you have some. If you don't, giving some time. There has to be some kind of activity because this is foundational. This is basic. Um, I think also uh, there has to be a confession of thoughts and feelings and sins to somebody. So you got to find someone, hopefully um, an experienced person within the church. doesn't have to be a, an elder from Mount Athos, but it should be some wise, solid person who is walking the Christian path that you can open your life to. But be very careful who you do it with. Never open yourself to somebody you don't trust. But tr ask God to provide a trustworthy person that you can speak with, that you can share your deepest problems, feelings, temptations, sins with. And of course, if you're in the church, you go to confession, <laughs> sacramental confession. And you have to have some kind of guidance. You have to have like a spiritual elder of some sort. <laughs> God will provide it if you want it. Uh, and then I, I, I think uh, another couple things would be um, you should think about your family of origin. Like, what was your life like? What was your childhood like? What were your parents like? What's your relation to your father and mother? If you even know who they are. Some people adopted, they don't know who their parents are. Uh, how do we assess our, our upbringing? Because in our in all spiritual life of, a mature, of an older person is how you've been dealing with your childhood. And you got to come to terms with your childhood. And usually people waffle between demonizing their their uh, parents or grandparents or something, their tradition, or then idealizing it to the point where it's ridiculous. You got to be truthful about it. There's good things, there's bad things. There's positive things, there's negative things. Whoever you are, but you got to come to terms with it. And if you haven't dealt with it, you're not going to make it. You're just going to, and if you enter into church and become a teacher or something, you're just going to be a danger to people. And then I think we should do some checklists like whether we really have addictions uh, alcohol or food. The big one today is sex. My guess is that huge numbers of people, especially men, they're addicted to internet porn, to all that kind of stuff. 
And if there's an addiction to sexual activity or to drinking, or but there can be addiction to other things. There can be addiction to religion. You can quarrel. You like to fight about religion, fight about the Bible. Well, during this period, you're not fighting with anybody. There should be no theological fights or polemics or anything. It should just be an ascetical inner for several months, I would say, in the beginning. And then you see where it leads you. That would be the suggestion that I would make to somebody who wants to get into it truthfully and in depth. Because it's both an intellectual, it's a, it's a biblical, you got to read the Bible, uh, you got to go to church, you got to hear what's said. But basically, um, the old saying of the, uh, you know, of course, the Lord himself said, blessed are the pure in heart, they will see God. So we're purifying our heart, but we're purifying our mind too. And uh, of course, the old saying is those who truly pray are theologians, and theologians are those who truly pray. So it cannot be simply uh, an intellectual or library or academic uh, enterprise. However, study is still important. <laughs> you got to learn things. But different people have different ways. There's different temperaments, different gifts. Everybody's different. But in some way or another, I think everybody has to follow those things that I just mentioned. Hi again. Hope you enjoyed this episode from interview with Father Thomas Hopko of Blessed Memory. Please subscribe to get notified when new episodes become available. And if you enjoy the content on this channel, please consider supporting it. There's a link to the support page on our website below this video. Thanks so much. Have a great weekend and we'll see you soon.